my friend Tucker Carlson from The Daily Caller and also a Fox News contributor. Hey, Tucker, how are you? Laura, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. So th- th- that's my theory, that the, the, that the disconnect between a lot of the primary voters, uh, certainly the ones who are surging for Newt, and the, uh, you know, the smart people, the, you know, the David Brooks and David Frum, and, you know, these guys, I, I like them all, they're all my friends, but there, there's a disconnect there. And I think we have to examine why that disconnect is there. A lot of it goes back with the, I think, to the distrust and the dismay about what happened during the Bush years. And for, for, for Newt's case, he doesn't seem to be, in the eyes of many, connected to the failed Bush years. And yeah. I think that helps him here. I think your analysis is spot on. In fact, he's, he's more implicated than Romney in the travesties of the Bush years, but that's not the point. The point is he doesn't seem as if he is. And I think you're absolutely right. Smart people miss this because they saw the contest between the establishment and the grassroots, the Tea Party, as an ideological contest. And really, it's not. It's the grassroots versus the elite. It's populism. And Romney is perceived as part of the establishment. He's therefore bad. And Gingrich is seen as an insurgent outside the establishment, and he's therefore acceptable. So it's not about, you know, who has violated the conservative catechism, who has had crazy liberal ideas. That's not what it's about. It's about who's on the inside and who's on the outside. And Mm. as far as I'm concerned, you know, since I I have an office, you know, a block from Newt's on K Street here in Washington, I consider Newt, I think accurately, very much part of the Washington establishment, someone who took all this money from Freddie Mac. Holy smokes. I mean, you don't get more establishment than that, but it doesn't stick to him. And I think part of it is Newt really does understand conservative voters. He knows he knows their erogenous zones. He knows how to talk to them. And he understands that attacking his fellow Republican candidates doesn't help. They want the attention on Obama, and Newt gets that. Almost unique among these candidates, he doesn't waste a lot of time attacking the other people on stage, he goes after the president. And that's what conservatives want. That's what the grassroots, that's what I want. That's what, you yeah. know. And, and you're right, there is, a, there is a clear and cogent case to make that the establishment is represented by Gingrich. I mean, well, and Gingrich is the establishment. Is. On, and, but the but same, same, same thing that can be said, of course, about, about Romney, right? Romney might not have been in Washington, D.C., but, you know, he's kind of out of central casting for a Republican, you know, establishment figure. I mean, he's, he's kind of moderate on most issues. He's kind of genteel, patrician. And, you know, I think the Tea Party folks are saying, OK, we tried that before. It was kind of like the Bush approach to Republican politics. We want a fighter, someone who's a little pugnacious at times, maybe, but nevertheless, someone who stayed in contact with the grassroots and someone maybe even who looks a little bit more like the grassroots. You know what I mean? The, the, the fact that Newt doesn't look like he belongs on the cover of the J. Crew Christmas catalog might actually be, <laughs> oh, in a weird way, helping him. You're totally right. I mean, I think you're spot on. You have described the thinking of a lot of voters, but with respect... I think on their part, it's a shallow analysis. Like, you have to block out the ambient noise. You have to filter out things like what do people look like. And you have to ask yourself a couple of basic questions. Who has a better shot of beating Barack Obama? Who is actually more likely to govern as a conservative? Who is more likely to turn to government for big solutions, right? And who has an affinity for, you know, overarching plans? Uh, And who is more likely to you know, govern in a common sense way. I mean, these are like the basic questions you need to ask. And I I understand why the grassroots hate the establishment. I feel the same way. I live here, and they have betrayed conservatism, for sure, and their own voters consistently for decades now, and especially during the eight years under Bush. I understand all of that. But that doesn't mean the new Gingrich is conservative. It just it doesn't add up to that. Sorry. Right. Well, when we... When we look at this again, and, and this is another thought I had, and I'd be curious to what you, you think about this. I think in our lifetime, certainly Tucker, we grew up as we we grew up as adherents to Reagan. Reagan really was conservatism to us. I mean, I worked under Ronald Reagan. You're a little younger than I am, but you know we're the same general you yes. know, general age group, and. So he was the he was the conservative imprimatur for us, and I think so many people today are saying, okay, who's the Reagan? Who's the Reagan? Who's Reagan? And it might just be that this time around, there, there once again is not a Reagan fi- Reagan-esque figure, and conservatism 
has to fight for itself, right? I mean, so so those people who are, are conservative and maybe they kind of feel like they're Tea Party conservatives, they're not really libertarians, they're, they're, they're more concerned about China than the establishment, well, they're just going to have to fight for their ideals in race after race, local, you know, uh, from local politics to state to governor to, to Senate races. And they're going to have to just understand that for whatever reason, the Republican Party uh, is not going to nominate someone or didn't have anyone to run who was really going to be that once in a lifetime figure again. I mean, they, they don't come along very often. No, they don't. But even in my view, deeper than that, there's no consensus on what exactly it means. To exactly. Be conservative, all of That's the other point I made yeah, so the other right day. We don't know what we think about those things. Exactly. Is I mean, just take foreign policy. One among several examples, what is a conservative foreign policy? Is it neoconservative? Paleoconservative? Is it libertarian? I mean, each one has a valid claim, I think, to the name conservative. And neither or none of them has a majority of support among the conservative base. And so Hence, this is why we are where we are in this exactly. uh, election, don't you think? It's 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 really more chaotic I think than people realize. Now, the good news is nominating contests have a way of settling these questions. So, you know, the nominee becomes the leader of the party and you hope of the movement and people coalesce around that, and he makes the case and convinces For better or worse. Else. For better yeah, well, or for be- worse. Well, well, look what happened with Bush. I mean, the Bush administration, I think a lot of the the people uh, most ardently slamming Gingrich now, many of them are coming out of the the Bush mold, which is fine. Not all of them, but many. But I, the, you, you make a strong argument that <laughs> over the last four years of the, the second Bush term, those years were a disastrous years for conservatism. We had Medicare Part B. We had the the ramp up in Iraq, which you know everyone was told was going to make the you know Middle East safer. We're going to be more secure. We were going to you know it was and, and it turned out to be a lot more difficult than we thought. China got more powerful. American wealth uh, declined, didn't increase. Families became more uh, concerned. Their mortgages uh, in jeopardy. So you know conservatism. I think was on the rocks after people put all their hopes in George W. Bush. He was the he was the new Reagan. Well, he not wasn't me, the new man. Reagan. Not, I wrote yeah, well, the I didn't. Piece in 1999, that the guy was not a conservative, and I was attacked by fellow conservatives. Well, you were prescient and a sellout, and I'm sucking up mm-hmm. the liberal media, and all these morons attacked me. I who own my own shooting range. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> I'm liberal now. Are you kidding? Yeah. And, who are you and, supporting in '99? I, I, I don't need to support anyone. I, I was, Who were I you? Clear, uh, a clear-headed analysis of this guy's politics right. based on a month spent traveling with him and asking him right. questions about his beliefs. I have always liked him. I like him to this day. Yeah, I, who doesn't? Right. He's a totally nice guy and, a, and an interesting and a funny Patriot. guy. Patriot. But yep. he's no conservative, and he never was. But and that's if you, you, you that out loud, man. You got hit in the face. Right. By well, you were you were you were ahead of me. I just wanted you know. I just wanted done with the the Clinton hangover. But you me were. Too. You were you were certainly ahead of me on that, but but the the, the that the, isn't that the point we arrive at though that don't think that either one of these guys is going to be waving the flag for for conservatism. Okay, both of them are good. But I think both of them. I, I disagree with some of my friends on the right. I don't think Gingrich should be this big disaster. I think Obama's a lot more afraid of Gingrich than the elites think he is. Uh, I think he'd be formidable against Obama, and I think Newt would, in the end, probably be a pretty good president. I think Romney would be an excellent president. I think both of them would actually do a pretty good job. Well, but they'd neither be of them, than this guy, of course, but neither of them are the new Reagan. And I think people have to stop thinking either of them is possibly going to be the new Reagan. That's not going to happen. Well, I just I don't believe that. People have lowered their expectations. Look, I mean, the point is, the current president really is about as bad a president as you could get. I didn't want to think that. I've been convinced of it. He stayed up late for the past three years every night trying to hurt the country. He's done it. And anybody would be better. And I'm, I sincerely mean that. I would be thrilled to vote for Michelle Bachman over this guy, or anybody. So, mm-hmm. like, if you go into it with that attitude, you're not going to be disappointed. But just don't have, don't go into it thinking that either of these people, of these individuals, good people both, are going to be the next Reagan. They're not. They might be great, you know, presidents, and they, but they're not going to be necessarily reflecting uh, the you know, that idea of of limited government, small government, uh, innovative, conservative solutions, getting rid of these entitlements. They probably are not going to be that. A clear-headed foreign policy. I don't know. But, you know, I just think that's we always get ourselves in that that pickle by thinking, oh, we've got to get the next conservative. Well, what if what if neither of them are that conservative? But why do conservatives want to worship other people anyway? I mean, I thought that's a that's a pretty the ideology is impulse. that exactly. But there's this hero worship. involved. Yep. You know what? You're right. You're right. 
I mean, we should recognize that every person is flawed. We all fall short. I mean, that's yep. the whole point. We're, we're not liberal. Liberals are the ones who imagine that some program or individual is going to solve every problem. And we understand that, like, we're going to die with problems unsolved. That's the nature of life. And Why can't we be more realistic? Why do we need kings? I don't understand it. Oh, I, I, bingo! We don't need dynasties. We don't need we know we don't need kings, but we do, and, and and we really I think move the ball down the field field a little bit here, Tucker. That conservatives need to get back to work, and on all these critical issues from the rise of China to our relationship with Russia, our trade policy, uh, you know, taxes, uh, middle class issues in this country. Figure out what the conservative position on these things is going to be, and then duke it out al- along those lines. And then do it, do it, do it in these other candidates, Senate races, House races. And, and that's how you rebuild a new understanding of conservatism or, or reinvigorated, uh, older conception of conservatism. But until that happens, everybody's going to be disappointed in these candidates. None of them are ever going to, are going to measure up. Uh, Tucker, that was a great, uh, great segment. And I probably talked too much, but I, I was so glad you came on. Oh, I, w- I was great. That was, that was interesting as hell. Thank you, Laura. All right. You take care and have a Merry Christmas if I don't see you and don't talk to you to you and your family. You too. Thank you.